ESPN presents Arctic Blast, an up-close and personal look at the sport of snowmobiling in the 90s. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Myers and welcome to a very special program which will take you on a roller coaster whirlwind tour of one of the most exciting outdoor sports in the world. So sit back and relax. For those of you who have never ridden a snowmobile, this show will introduce you to a wondrous new outdoor sport. For those of you who haven't ridden in years, well, you're not going to believe how the sport has grown and the astounding technology of the current snowmobile. And if you're one of three and a half million active snowmobile enthusiasts, I don't have to say a word. I know you're ready for a half hour of snowmobiling Shangri-La. When the winter winds blow and the skies dust the land with white powder, most inhabitants go into hibernation, both literally and figuratively. Mother Nature's creatures seek shelter while man adjusts to the winter environment by taking his activities indoors. Millions, however, have found an alternative to that annual scenario. Winter, you see, is traditionally the time for the snowmobile enthusiasts to get out their pleasure machines and go for it. There are very few sports that allow its participants to take in some of the most picturesque scenery in the world while treating them to one of the most exhilarating experiences imaginable. Parks and recreation areas that are plush and green during the summer are transformed into adventurous and challenging riding areas during the winter months. Such renowned recreational landmarks like Yellowstone National Park or Jackson Hole, Wyoming are just two examples of popular riding hotspots. Once you've decided upon a location, your snowmobile can take you places previously thought unreachable during any other time of the year. Your sled can take you on a personal expedition into back canyons, forests, and mountaintops. Or if you prefer a more sedate outing, you can utilize trails designed for snowmobile use. And don't think you'll be relegated to the same trail over and over again. There are more than 100,000 miles of groomed and signed snowmobile trails in North America. To put that into perspective, that's twice as many miles as comprise the entire U.S. interstate highway system. So whether you want to take your snowmobile to the outer edge of performance or you're just looking for a therapeutic wintertime activity, this is the sport for you. Watch as snowmobilers explore the nuances of this beautiful yet stimulating sport.
When we return to Arctic Blast, we'll show you the fun times and great opportunities available to snowmobiling individuals and groups. We'll be right back. Arctic Blast is brought to you by Arctic Cat, world-class snowmobiles. Arctic Cat, the leader of the pack. You probably think it's too early to start thinking about a new Arctic Cat snowmobile. Yep. Well, it's not. In fact, they're arriving at your dealer right now. And while you might want to wait until winter to ride them, it pays to buy your new Arctic Cat right now. Arctic Blast continues. One of the largest growing segments of the snowmobile population are the young adults who want to share some quality time with their friends. As thousands have discovered, overnight snowmobile trips have a lot to offer. Out in the trails, you can turn in some hot riding, relax and take in the sights with some mild-mannered touring, or try a little of both. And when the winter winds prove to be a little too much, pull over, break out a couple of thermos containers, enjoy a hot beverage, and you've got an impromptu snowmobile party. Snowmobiling not only brings together American young adults, but whole countries as well. Earlier this year, three men, two Americans and a Russian, took a 5,000-mile odyssey across parts of the U.S. and Soviet Union. There was no political relevance to the trip. It was just three pioneer spirits on the ultimate snowmobile adventure. The participants? Lee Bussey from Forest Lake, Minnesota. Scott Eilertson from Oakdale, Minnesota and Grigory Shuling. That's Grigory modeling the latest in Russian headgear. The three set out on January 16th on a one-of-a-kind trip that would end in the Soviet Union nearly three months later. The first leg of the trip took the trio and their escorts from Minnesota to New York, where they would fly across the Atlantic to Helsinki, Finland. In between Minnesota and the Big Apple, there were daily get-togethers with fellow snowmobile enthusiasts. There was definitely no shortage of social activities on this trip. Upon arrival in Europe, news cameras were replaced by home video cameras. All along the frigid route, the amateur videographers caught the snowmobile contingent being greeted warmly by the Soviet people. Red Square in Moscow, a picturesque finale to the long trek. Although the trio would ride deeper into the Soviet Union, Moscow was the symbolic end to the expedition. As if they didn't have enough time in the saddle, the two Americans took on some of the locals in a friendly snowcross event in which the U.S. riders whipped their Soviet counterparts. It was obvious Russian snowmobile technology has not kept up with the rest of the world. The Minnesota to Moscow expedition was an example of snowmobile fun taken to the max. Although the trip took close to 100 days, the memories will last a lifetime. His face may or may not be familiar to you, but his is a household name and is synonymous with speed and excitement. This is Mario Andretti, Indianapolis 500 champion, IndyCar series champion, Formula One world champion, Daytona 500 champion. You name it, he's driven it and he's won in it. In addition to being one of the all-time racing greats, Mario has been an avid snowmobile enthusiast for many years. Well, we just, uh, we have a different variety of, uh, of uh, usage for the snowmobiles. Uh, we, we just use them to ride around and go trailing, and also we do quite a bit of racing on, on the lake that I own. And uh, so this type of recreation has really brought our family together in many ways because uh, uh, we just, take advantage of the winter months and uh, uh, Arctic Cat has been part of our family if you will for since about the middle 70s a lot of riding here 
As Mario will tell you, doing it on a snowmobile may not be like hitting 200 miles plus at Indy, but it comes pretty darn close. In fact, one of the ways Mario trains for races like the Indy 500 is to take his snowmobile out and put it through its paces. It's a tremendous workout, right Mario? Oh yeah, incredibly. In fact, uh, it's great exercise. I always, uh, whatever I do, in a way of um, activities at home, I always try to use that as an excuse for training. And uh, it beats the heck out of uh, jogging, I think, or walking, doing that sort of thing. Mario Andretti, a racing great who belongs to the ever-increasing fraternity of snowmobile riders. And when we return to Arctic Blast, we'll see some more snowmobile riders competing in this country's most famous snowmobile racing event. Arctic Cat, sponsors of this ESPN special, invite you to the 1991 Arctic Cat National Dealer Open House. Come on by your local Arctic Cat snowmobile dealer and see the new models. Get together with fellow enthusiasts and help kick off the new riding season. Arctic Cat dealers will be on hand with refreshments, brochures, and the answers to all your questions. And if you're ready to deal, don't forget to take advantage of preseason offers from participating dealers. For more information on Arctic Cat's National Open House, call your local Arctic Cat dealer. think some people spend their winters indoors. Arctic Blast. Just as the art of snowmobiling has undergone a drastic metamorphosis over the years, the sport or competition aspect of snowmobiling has grown with equal intensity. This is Eagle River, Wisconsin. This is the Indianapolis 500 of snowmobile racing. Just like at Indy, the day starts early. Snowmobiles designed to negotiate the famous banked half-mile oval are ready for battle. All the manufacturers are here. All the top riders are here. A win at Eagle River brings a rider instant recognition. A victory for a manufacturer goes a long way on Monday morning in the ad agencies around the country. The pressure of the big race weighs heavy on the shoulders of team managers, mechanics, and of course, the riders. 27-year-old Brian Sturgeon is one of the best in the business. As a factory rider for the Arctic Cat racing team, Sturgeon has become one of the most respected racers on the snowmobile circuit. His success is due in part to his mental and mechanical preparation on and off the track. The action at Eagle River is hot and heavy. The most popular snowmobile racing venue in North America stages competition in 13 classes. The stock or production classes carry a lot of prestige. After all, manufacturers pit their best over-the-counter sleds against each other. Adding to the prestige and recognition factor is the fact that only minor modifications are allowed on the stock machines. The fans know that they can buy what is being raced. The A stock class is where the fastest sleds compete. And our friend Brian Sturgeon stunned the racing fraternity by winning that class on essentially a B stock Articat EXT special. Racing against sleds with 20 to 30 more horsepower, Sturgeon drove his Articat to victory and into the record books. Oval racing requires speed and finesse. Cross-country racing, on the other hand, requires speed, endurance, and the ability to withstand punishment over a sustained period of time. The International 500 is acknowledged as the most grueling cross-country test for both man and machine. And like the oval at Eagle River, it's a very prestigious victory for a racer's mantle, as well as a manufacturer's ad brochure. The concept of the event is simple. 
For three days, snowmobiles leave designated starting points in timed intervals and traverse nature's roughest terrain. The event starts off in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. 160 miles later, day one ends in Grand Marais, Minnesota. Day two begins in Grand Marais and ends in Duluth, Minnesota, another 175 miles. The final day, there's another 150 miles of competition until you hit the finish line at White Bear Lake a small town about 30 miles north of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis-St. Paul. So who came out on top in the 1990 I-500? Articat's EXT Special again took the laurels in the most prestigious event of its type. But this time it wasn't Brian Sturgeon, rather his stablemate, Kirk Hibbert. Winning margin, four and a half minutes. In a race where the integrity of both man and machine are tested to the limit, the sled from Thief River Falls, Minnesota, and a rider from the farmlands of Idaho reigned supreme. So far, you've seen snowmobiles in their intended environment, snow. But these technicians are having a great time testing the suspension and transmission of some of the latest models on grass. Snowmobiles are not designed or constructed for this type of use. It is indeed an unusual sight. And speaking of unusual, when Arctic Blast continues, we'll check out some non-traditional snowmobiling activities. Come on back and join us after these messages, and you'll see snowmobile action like you never imagined. tests we put our snowmobiles through. Just getting across this desk may be the toughest one. Arctic Blast. Welcome back. In the last segment, you saw snowmobiles being tested on grass. Well, here's a variation on that theme a sport which combines snowmobiles and grass. It's called, appropriately enough, grass drags. A quick peek through the paddock area reveals some mighty strange configurations. Imagination is not lacking, that's for sure. Winning on the grass requires horsepower. Consequently, engine tuning and prepping is a constant activity during a racing weekend. One major difference between snowmobile grass drags and automobile drag racing is in the traction department. While cars opt for big rubber slicks, snowmobiles use treads embedded with spikes to grab hold of the ground. The result, speeds up to 90 miles per hour for some of the heavily modified sleds. Besides the exotic high-speed machines, there are a lot of stock-looking sleds. These competitors prefer more of a dealer showroom type of appearance. Regardless, the thrill of competition is still there. In short, whether it's modified or stock, grass drags are a lot of fun, and that's the bottom line. Now, grass drags are not such a radical departure from the snowmobile's natural habitat. The only differences are the lack of snow and the warmer temperatures. As we're about to see, however, ingenious minds have come up with something totally bizarre. This looks like a normal Articat snowmobile, right? Keep watching. This is what is called water skipping or water cross to use the proper snowmobile vernacular. These are standard sleds with modified rear suspensions. Also, the riders have put their sleds on a diet. 
In watercross, the better the power to weight ratio, the more competitive you are, and the less chance for disaster. Now disaster in watercross does not carry with it the devastating effects you might associate with high speed action. Disaster in watercross competition is, well, what's that old adage? A picture is worth a thousand words. Before you take an expedition out for sunken snowmobile treasure, the sleds are retrieved almost immediately after sinking. A specially equipped pontoon boat with a winch takes care of all the salvage jobs. Despite the possibility of getting a good soaking, the popularity of this sport is growing. Well, we, we have a lot of fun doing it and it's uh, kind of versatile. You can take your machines that you spend quite a bit of money on in the wintertime and do some modifications and use them in the summertime. So. Rather than letting that, those toys sit in the garage all summer, we play with them in, in the water. The really big attraction of watercross can be summed up in two words, unique and exciting. And if you're one of those adventurous aquatic types who are into one-of-a-kind thrills, this sport is like nothing you've ever experienced on water. They're not like a jet ski, they're not like a boat, they're not like a snowmobile in the wintertime. It's, uh, some of the best descriptions I had were like riding on marbles, you know, and, and you're just waiting to see what happens next. As racing goes, it's exciting, inexpensive, and a lot of fun. It's called watercross, and it very well could be your next favorite pastime. When we return, we'll wrap things up here on Arctic Blast. Come on back after these messages. You probably think it's too early to start thinking about a new Arctic Cat snowmobile. Yep. Well, it's not. In fact, they're arriving at your dealer right now. And while you might want to wait until winter to ride them, it pays to buy your new Arctic Cat right now. Arctic Blast has been brought to you by Arctic Cat. World-class snowmobiles. Arctic Cat, the leader of the pack. Arctic Blast continues. Welcome back. Finally on Arctic Blast, the ultimate snowmobile. Yes, it is a snowmobile. It has skis up front for steering and a tread on the rear for traction. Other than those two aspects, though, this thing is all imagination and performance. Twenty-two feet in length. It produces an excess of fifteen hundred horsepower at wide open throttle. The chassis is made out of 4130 chromoly tubing. Um, it's constructed, uh, I suppose, somewhere is on the order of a, like a top fuel dragster. The first half of the run, uh, you got just massive acceleration. The machine's trying to pull off from underneath it. It's stretching your arms back, flattening you in the seat really, really hard. And then in the second half, uh, you got the big wind pressure, you know, over 150 miles an hour. This creation may be the perfect sled for one Mr. Claus around the 25th of December. He could definitely get around in a hurry. Oh, but I'd hate to see Rudolph and company out of work. Well, that about does it for this special presentation. 
Arctic Blast. I hope you enjoyed our look at the sport of snowmobiling, and I invite you to try this sport out. There are many different parks and recreation areas around the country that cater to the snowmobile enthusiast. Many of these locations have rental programs. You can try it before you buy it. So join the thousands who have already discovered this exciting outdoor activity. Get yourself an Arctic Cat and have an Arctic Blast. I'm Larry Myers. See you on the trails. Arctic Cat. Sponsors of this ESPN special invite you to the 1991 Arctic Cat National Dealer Open House. Come on by your local Arctic Cat snowmobile dealer and see the new models. Get together with fellow enthusiasts and help kick off the new riding season. Arctic Cat dealers will be on hand with refreshments, brochures, and the answers to all your questions. And if you're ready to deal, don't forget to take advantage of preseason offers from participating dealers. For more information on Arctic Cat's National Open House, call your local Arctic Cat dealer.